Hi, second grade. Welcome to your online art class. Today and for the next couple of weeks, we're going to be working on a Fox Springtime project. So this is going to be a three part project. It's all going to be on one video. I'll tell you what the breakup of the lesson is as we go. Um, so all you're really going to need is a pencil. If you have a permanent marker, great. If not, a black crayon will do um, and regular markers. If you don't have some of those materials, we'll just do what we can with what we have. All right, it's kind of the way this whole situation is going. So without further ado, you have a big piece of white paper that was sent home with you. Um, what we are going to do is always starting with pencil. You guys know that we always start with pencil. I'm going to be doing this in permanent marker just so you can see it better um, after I do one part with the fox. So we're going to start by drawing and lightly drawing because we're going to add, we're going to erase a couple of things. An oval. So your oval is going to be about, if you're going to think about this as halfway, this is halfway mark about, so the top of the head should be about um, at the halfway line. But do you guys see my circle there? It's nice and big, okay? Um, the rest of this I'm going to do with a permanent marker just so you can see it better. Um, but I'll show you where the, um, the erasing part comes in. So we've got your circle here, and I'll just do part of the circle because I know that this part I'm not going to be changing, but there are other other parts that I am just so you can see so about if you think about this as a half of a circle it's a little bit above the halfway point we're going to do a curved line that comes down like this and then a curved line that comes down and leaves a line down the middle so this is the fox so this is where the fox's eyes are going to end up being and this is its nose so we need to make sure that we leave this space here Okay, so here's where the erasing is going to be. <clears throat> so you see that we've got this line here. Well, the fox has um, almost like fluffier skin, I guess, around the eye area. So we're going to come down just a little further. And then we're going to bump out like a triangle. We're going to do three of those and then connect it back down. So we're, if you can see my pencil line here. That's why I didn't want you guys to start with marker because we're going to do that. If you are absolutely confident that you can do this without making a mistake because you don't have another piece of my paper that um, you can use and it's the tall paper. So it's, I don't know how many of you have tall paper readily handy at home. Um, do everything with a pencil if you can help it. Um, again, we're going to do the same thing to the other side. We're going to come down a little bit. We're going to bump out a triangle without drawing the full triangle. It's just the tip of the triangle. One, two three and we're going to continue and bring it down to the point all right so now we're going to do the nose the nose is a rounded triangle like that you can either fill it in now or you can wait until later to fill it in again this part um, after we're your initial drawing with pencil you can either trace with marker permanent marker or crayon. I would suggest using permanent marker or crayon because we are going to be using marker for another part um, that you're not going to want to have mix in with the black. Um, if you'll, ex I'll explain later. Um, sorry, I digress. So now we're going to be doing the eyes. So the eye is pretty close to the nose line. Okay, it's not way over here. Remember that fox are prey, I mean predators, and predators have eyes on the front of their face. Just like humans are predators, we hunt things. So they have eyes on the front of their face. Oh, mine are a little lopsided. If you want your eyes to have that little um, white circled glow to them, this is going to look a little silly until you, until you color it in. But you do a little circle like that. And then you fill in all the space around it. All right, 
So we've got the fox's eyes done in its face. Now we need ears. So your ears, see where this line starts, where we had that fluffy part of the head? We're gonna come up a little higher than that line. We're gonna do a curved triangle. So see how we start the curve, and then we have the point of the ear, and then we're gonna curve back down. So again, we're gonna come up a little higher than that line that, um, that separates the, the brow from the fuzzy part. Excuse that, sorry. Uh, so curve up to a point and then back in again. And then you can do the middle part like this. So you're just following the same line that you just did, only a little closer together. Um, then we're going to start about halfway between this point and where the nose is, so that this is about halfway right here. Do you guys see that? And we're going to do a curved line down for the body. Like that. All right. So the last step in this project is we are going to be doing a couple of... Um, Actually, at this point, you can start tracing. Trace this part, and then I can show you and erase this extra stuff. Because then we're going to end up adding some detail. So the rest of the detail is all little lines. And the little lines are going to be um, showing the direction of fur or adding the fur detail. So with your pencil, you can and I'll show this closer because I don't want to do this too hard. You're going to divide up this middle space of the head all the way down the nose. And I'll show you again, I'll show you up closer so you can see. So it's going to look like that. Looks a little silly right now, but so what we're going to do with this is we're going to draw and you can start in whatever line you want. You're going to draw vertical lines, which is up and down, that stop in between the space of one of those lines that you've got. So see how that's, this is the top of one line, that's the this top of another line. So we're going to go like that. Okay. So you're going to go all the way across and fill up all of that space with them. You can get as close to each other as you want to. They don't need to match up every time um, when you go to the next row. It kind of looks better if you don't do it that way. Take your time when you do this part. This part you don't have to do in pencil. Um, you can just go straight to crayon or permanent marker. Or if you need to use regular marker, that's fine too. I'm trying to work quickly so this doesn't end up being a 50 minute video. So you take your time so that yours turns out better than what mine will be. And remember we're working for looking for best work, your best, not someone else's best. So you know what that means for you. Hopefully you guys at least have some music or some noise going on. It is so quiet in my room right now. It's quiet everywhere. Definitely missing the presence of you guys. Going all the way down the snout. All right, so now we're going to do the ears. Um, the ears, you're going to do the same thing, except for, see how this line here goes across this way? 
we're going to do those lines like that. We're going to just do the exterior or the outside and we're going to keep that angle of the head. So again, this is the angle of the head and my lines are going this way. So I can bring that closer so you can see. Okay, you're going to do that to both ears. So this goes this direction, so now my lines are going to follow that contour line. So this is the contour line or an outside line. I'm following that angle. All right, so we've got that. We're going to do the same thing except for our lines are going to follow the sides of the ears. So if this side of the ear is sloping this direction, that's the way we want our lines to go. So now that it's coming around, it's kind of curving along with it. So the angle of those lines are changing. You guys see how I did that? I'll do it a little slower on this side. So the angle is going this direction now, right? So we're going to go like this. And now it's curving a little bit, so the angle of those lines are going to change a little bit to follow the curvature of the ear. I'll do the other side too. So again, we're angling it to follow the curve of the ear. And the other side. All right, so now we're going to do the face. So the face, um, we're going to see where the beginning of this triangle is right here. We're going to follow the, this contour line of the face all the way down. And then we're going to go to where the next triangle would begin and the other one ends right here where this point is. We're going to still follow that same curvature. Go to the next one, do the same thing. And then we're just going to make up the last one. So again, right where the new triangle begins where the new one begins and the old one ends. Oops, this is supposed to curve this way. And then make up the last one. So it's like that. Okay. And then what we're going to do with that is we're going to do some on each side of the line. So on this side of the line, can you guys see that? Sorry we're going to do diagonal lines that follow the slope like that and then on the opposite side we're going to come down at the other angle so it almost looks like these are coming to a point see how this makes kind of like an arrow like that okay so you're going to follow that down so it's also going to curve as you go and then we're going to do the opposite again. So we're going to go in the opposite direction so it looks now like the arrow is pointed in the other way. And then again, opposite again. And last one on this side, like that. Okay, so now we're going to do the same. Um, you don't have to start it the exact same way. You can doesn't matter if you know this one is going towards the point. Like this one is also now going towards the point for those lines. If you want to go the opposite, doesn't matter as long as you're doing the opposite of whatever you're doing now on the next one.
And again, take your time. Don't go fast like me. I just don't want this to be like a half an hour long video for you to have to watch. Hopefully it will take you more than a half an hour to do, but um, if you put the time in rather than rushing through it, it should take you three class times. All right, so then the last step is the body. And so now see the curve, this, uh, the contour line of this head, we're gonna follow the curve of the body like that. So rather than going straight across, because straight across makes things look flat. And foxes are not flat. Foxes are round, right? Um, you can also add, if you want to, you can also add the armpit lines where the, where the, um, oh my goodness, where the, the arm and the body begins to just make that, that line a little thicker so that it would kind of separate from the rest of the body. You don't have to do those lines. It just thought it would be kind of cool. All right. So then if we draw an, an, a line down from the nose, I did it very, very lightly just so you can barely see it. Can you guys see that? So that is going to be the line, the dividing part of the line where you, where the angle of this next part changes. So remember those angles from up here. Now we're going to do the angles on this side of the line, going away from that line, like this direction. You have permanent marker maybe have something underneath the underneath your workspace if you're getting towards the edge so that you don't write on your parents tables <laughs> all right and then on the other side we're going in the opposite direction so see how these lines this line goes this way this line goes this way So these are very basic lines, but does this now, doesn't this now kind of look like fur? And if you'd like to make your fox um, or an orangish red or whatever color you want your fox to be, there are brown foxes too, red foxes. You decide if you'd like to color them, you can. Um, the way that I am teaching this project, my my fox is going to stay black and white, but you can absolutely change that if you don't want yours to be black and white and make it a colored fox. So um, the drawing of the fox and then the lines of the fox, this is really day one and one and a half, I'd say. So if you were in class with me right now, we probably would have gotten through all of the drawing, tracing the outline of the fox, and then getting maybe part of the fur lines in. So take one and a half days to do this part if that's the way you want to break it up. If you're really enjoying the project and you just want to keep going with it, by all means do it that way. Um, but that's kind of along the lines of where we're breaking things up. So day one and a half to three <clears throat> is finishing tracing of the fox and then doing this next part, which is going to be the flower. So here's my full fox. If you couldn't see that, I'm not really paying attention to what you can see on my phone rather than doing the artwork. Um, so now we're going to be doing the flowers. So the flowers we're going to do in pencil first and then marker, and I'll show you why. So there are a couple of different ways that you can draw flowers. I'll draw a couple separate ones here so you can see. So you can just start with a circle like this. I don't know if you can see it. I'll draw darker. So a circle. 
and then that'll be like the, the middle of the flower where all of the pollen is. And then you can do another circle and that's going to be um, maybe kind of like a, a poppy flower, if you've ever seen a poppy flower or um, a pansy flower. Um, and then this will be another color around it. So say this is orange, this is dark blue, and that's light blue. So you can separate, um, do flower like this with separate colors. Um, you can do this version of a tulip if you want to, where you start with the letter U, and then you just make a crown on top like this. Um, you can do a regular flower with the circle in the middle and then the petals around it, whether they come to a point like that or, um, or they're all rounded. As long as you draw them on the bigger side, that's what you want to do. Because if you look at these, these look like they'd be normal size flowers in relation to the size of what an actual fox would be, right? We wouldn't want to draw them a lot smaller. Because um, that would just be really silly because you'd have a giant fox. I mean, there are some flowers that are smaller, but in the, for the sake of painting purposes, we're going to draw them bigger. So... Um, Again, you're gonna draw this out with pencil. Um, do, do this along with me, do this on your own. You decide what you wanna do. You don't have to put them where I put them. You don't have to draw the exact flowers that I draw. You decide what you wanna do. You do it your way, not my way. Again, you can draw lightly so that if you make a mistake, you can erase it. I'm drawing harder so that you guys can actually see what I'm drawing. Yeah, I want one more. Um, I think it's good for me. Um, okay, so then we're also going to add some stems that are going to be really tall stems that might not actually make sense in the real world that these are th this tall, but we're going to go with it like that. Okay, uh, if you want to add some grass down below you too you can but you don't need to so grass is just wavy lines you're not drawing like the triangle peaks you're just keeping it nice and loosey lines like that okay so here is where the markers come in and watercolor so I sent you home with a paintbrush so you're just going to need a cup of water a paintbrush and some markers. So what we're gonna do is start by, really all we're doing, oh, I don't like that orange. It's not very bright. Let's see, I think that's the same one. Maybe not, it is, whatever, we're gonna go with it. I can't find a different one. So you're gonna outline part of it and then you're gonna add some water to it and that's gonna act as your watercolor. So then I'm going to outline both areas for this one, like that. Rinse off my brush because I was just using orange and I don't want orange in with my blue even though I still get a little bit. And I'm going to pull some of that color. Notice how I'm starting in where I put, uh, starting at where I put the line of the marker and I'm pulling some of that marker into the white space, like that. So this is a really cool way of getting around the fact that maybe not everybody has watercolor paint or maybe you ran out or maybe you don't have a color that you really want to use but you have that color in a marker like pink. Oops, I forgot to do this part. Maybe you don't have, um, you have a pink marker but you don't have pink watercolor and this is, this is your cheating but not really cheating, your, your smart um, problem solving way of getting the color that you need. 
Now remember when you're painting, you're having as much control of your brush as possible. You're still trying to stay in the lines and your bristles, which is the hair of your brush, is not flat, okay? You don't want the silver part to touch the paper. You only want the bristles to touch, okay? Um, so go ahead while I'm doing this or pause me or fast forward me, whatever you wanna do with what we're doing here and go ahead and do this next part. So this is the painting part would be definitely like the end of um, the end of day two and all of day three part. So we're doing the flowers only and the stems. We're not painting. I mean, if you want, like I said, if you want to paint your fox in, you can paint your fox in. Uh, we are going to do the grass, but you don't need to paint your background. Your background can stay white. As you can see, some colors work a little bit better than others. You can always go back and add a little bit more of the marker. Maybe your markers dried out a little bit. It would take a little bit more of the marker to um, get that color in there. So markers are pretty much just like watercolor paint inside of a marker. So the marker, when you leave it open, the um, all of the moisture dries out within the marker itself. Um, but once you get it wet again, the color will return. So just like your color palette of, of your, um, or your paint palette of your watercolor trays, it's, it works kind of the same way. <clears throat> I got red in my fox. One thing that I sometimes do is I go too quickly with my water. So be careful, like with, with um, what I put on my brush, be careful of just taking it out too quickly from your water cup and get splashes everywhere. Wipe it off on the edge of your cup to help not do that. Don't follow in my ways. Hmm, what other colors do I have? Not a very mixed bin. So one trick that I forgot to mention, or not trick, but one, I don't know. I can't think of the word. Um, one thing that you need to be careful of is that you don't do too much outlining at once. So like don't go and do all of your flowers and outline them and then go and do your watercolor. Um, it works better if your marker was just freshly applied to your paper um, so it doesn't have as much time to dry on your paper. Um, the watercolor spreads easier that way or the water for the marker to act as watercolor spreads easier this way. <clears throat> if you want to do more than one color, you can do more than one color in it. Um, just be aware that there are certain colors that when they blend together, make brown. So you don't want it. It gets trickier when you add three colors together, but the two colors combinations that you don't want to use together are um are purple and yellow green and red and um, blue and orange those ones make brown if you add three colors together then most of it will end up <laughs> making brown um if you're um i mean obviously red orange and yellow those ones work really well together or green, blue, and purple, those three colors work really t well together. But when you start crossing things where you've got red and um, red and green and orange, because the green crosses over with the two color combinations that make brown, by adding that third color, you're going to make brown still, just a different shade. 
All right, my last flower. Hmm. I don't know, I really like this blue. I can't wait to see what yours comes out like. I miss not being able to see it already. It's my favorite part about teaching is watching you guys and your progress. I just have to imagine until you show me how well you guys are doing. So remember when you're outlining, do both sides of the line so that you've got more color to pull from. If I didn't remind you of that earlier. And lastly, the grass and the stems. If you can do this next part quickly, you can probably get them all with the grass all on one side. You can probably get them all done. I like to blend the bottom and then go up the tops. So you can apply the same technique if you wanted to color your um, your fox in using the the orange you can do the outline and then pull in the color from there or you can just use watercolor if you've got watercolor but this is the project you are now finished and i would love to see what you guys did um so you can send it to my um to my email um at e l a c o u r s e at kearsarge.org um it's also on our web pages so you can find me there um i look forward to seeing them and i hope you guys enjoyed the lesson and i hope you're all doing well i miss you guys talk to you later bye